Hello and welcome. Today we will go over all of the tools and techniques which are banned on the OCP exam specifically. And if you were to do them, you will fail the OCP and you will have to spend $250 on an exam retake. So really don't want that happening to you. So make sure you listen until the end. Let's start with commercial tools. So very much any tools that are paid. Think something like Metaspot Pro is bad allowed. Normal data splits you can use on one target. Metasploit Pro is not allowed. Burp Suite Prone is also not allowed. And it's those type of tools, right? So basically all of those tools are not allowed, so don't use them. Next, we have automatic exploitation tools. Think something like SQL Map, right? SQL Map is not allowed to use. And nor is SQL Ninja. Uh, database on Autopon, browser Autopon, and tools like Power up you can use, but you can't use the auth upon functionality of power up. The in block all checks functionality of that tool is fine because that's pretty much um, just enumeration. But if you're using the auth upon feature of it, then that won't be valid. Uh, next up, we have the automatic massive vulnerability scatters. So something like messages will not be allowed. Next, pose open was. Corey and Pank saying that such a such a such a you get the point. However, one uh, one thing to mention here is that a tool like Nick though, if allowed, and an app scripting engine as well, is also actually allowed. So definitely to make sure to utilize that. Um, and yeah, don't uh, break any rules and mess up your exam because I don't want you guys to just have to spend a bunch of money on exam retakes for no reason, right? It's uh, we want to avoid it. Next thing. Is, don't use a tool like Responder because the spoofing capability of that tool is not allowed. So, and Guinness spoofing, etc. Just, yeah, it's not allowed, so don't use it. There's no, you don't really need to use Responder, so I won't recommend it. Um, or French ChatGPT is also not allowed. So, but basically, any, any LLMs. Now, again, one caveat to this huh? when you search something on Google, Google AI overview will trigger and it will show you like a little summary of what you search, right? So that is allowed. So if you just search something on Google and the Google overview AI shows you something, that is uh, that is fine, right? So I just thought that was uh, worthwhile to mention so that people don't have to be paranoid about that. Next up, something like Discord or really help or really ask them for help with, uh, from anyone. That is, it's not allowed to ask anyone for help with the exam. So once the exam has started and you're uh, hacking the machines and doing information, etc., you basically can't anyone, you can't ask anyone for help with that. It's all up to you. Again, one caveat to this is that you can use Discord, but specifically only to look up the information. I'll give you some, I'll give you a scenario. Let's say you come across a service that you're not familiarized with. Maybe you can find something in the logs on Discord, right? So you can use the offsite Discord and you can look in logs, etc. That is okay to live. Just please make sure you don't ask anyone for help in there or you get tempted or you ask your friend for help or whatever. Again, I really don't want you guys to say, so please don't do that. Only look for information if you need it. Don't grab source code or tools or anything like that and put it on your host. Basically, if there's anything that you need to download on your machine, do so. But if you copy source code or grab a tool and you put it on your host machine, you have to delete that. Documenting everything that you actually need. Uh, for the report, because again, you completely lose access to the exam. If there's a if there's a missing screenshot, even though you know how you hacked that machine, it completely does not matter unless you can prove it, right? Unless you have sufficient evidence for the actual exam report itself. So pays for that work to note everything and to take all the relevant screenshots so that once you hopefully succeed on the OCP, then you can document this and then you can pass the, re the report as well. That is pretty much all the advice that I have when it comes to ban tools. You're allowed to use, uh, obviously, tools like Hydra, like brutal resting tools. You're allowed to use uh, fussing tools like W files and F files. Then um, you're allowed to use specifically like directory brutal resting tools like GoBuster, Dirt Search, etc. All of these tools are fine. Just make sure that you use tools that does not have automatic exploitation features, like the YAM SQL map. It basically does everything for you or mass vulnerability scanners and all of the other tools that I mentioned with like spoofing capabilities, etc. That's the advice for that. I really hope uh, 
that helps uh, you guys out and at Carepoise at Things again. If you haven't seen our two hour free course here on YouTube, then I highly suggest you check that out. Uh, it's two hours, it's free. If you're new to OCP or you just want to look, take a look, take a peek at my methodology and like my notes and how I do things, then please check that out. Now, if you want the full access to the course, because again, that's just a little taste, uh, believe it or not, it's around five times as uh, big, the, uh, the complete course, and you also get direct access to me and the, the people inside of the community that's also doing the OCP. So just a quick little plug there. You'll find it in the description on WOG. It's super, super useful. And yeah, hope this video was helpful, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching. And if you have any questions, please leave them down below. Have an, have an awesome, awesome day.